What is up? Happy Friday. I'm so thankful that April Fools did not fall on the 8 bits broadcast day. I'm actually it's not the worst. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of April Fools. It's like hard to wade through. So, I'm I'm excited that we enter the month of April on April 4th. Hello. Welcome to 8 bits version 2.9. I'm DJ Wheat joined by our host It Me JP and Greenspeak. As you can see, we're down a player. We put in enough credits, but uh, unfortunately, uh, Dan's Gaming uh, wasn't feeling that great. So send him your wishes, but I uh, couldn't join us this morning. We'll still give you a hell of a show. Gentlemen, how's it going? Jeff, Jeff, how's Hi. the week been? How you been? I've been good. I've been uh, in Atlanta all week until uh, yesterday. So actually not Atlanta, Decatur, Decatur. which uh, is a suburb of uh, Atlanta and actually uh, really a cool town. Very cool town. You said you ate some great food. Absolutely amazing food. This place is like, I think it's sort of like uh, <clears throat> the Bay Area where I live in that San Francisco, like, it's still like the hub, right? But it's mm. so freaking expensive <laughs> that anybody who isn't rich basically is now expanded out into the suburbs, <laughs> which includes like a lot of the cool businesses and like young chefs and things like that. So Decatur has this like incredibly thriving uh, set of like pubs and uh, great restaurants. So mm. We just ate a ton and drank even more, and uh, yeah, I made it back last night, finally. Uh, <clears throat> I had an interesting experience uh, on the plane on the way back, which was that we, this direct flight from Atlanta to San Francisco, no problems all the way through, got there, nice good tailwind, land, and the uh, <clears throat> the plane door won't open. Oh. So oh. we're trapped in the plane. For what the like, fuck? Yeah, for like 45 minutes, they couldn't get the door open. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, yeah. like, that's when people are the most anxious <clears throat> that's when people on are flight. Panicking, I mean, yeah. not like they, you know, they're just like, oh, my God, we landed. Okay, I want to get out of here. Like everyone's, the, all those people, like, stand up immediately because they're exactly. ready to go out. And they're just, <clears throat> so exactly. what, did they, did they, like, bring out a, a welding torch and, like, have yeah. to, <laughs> really? Yeah, at one point, they said they were, they were, like, getting an electrician. It was, like. You're like calling, you're like looking in the yellow pages for an electrician. Oh, like, it's like the weirdest thing. Like, ladies and, and gentlemen, uh, we're going to have to blow these they doors. To, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then they told, is there an electrician on board? Then they, uh, <clears throat> then oh they uh, said, told us they were going to tow the plane. And they ended up not having to do that. They somehow finally got the door open. Uh, but yeah, it was that kind of awful thing where there were some people who stood up immediately. And then they stood up. For the whole forty-five minutes, like they never sat down. <laughs> you know, it's like you're really not going anywhere. Might as well sit. I love it. I love it. That's <laughs> too funny. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so other than that, though, it was great. So oh, wait, but, how but, did they get the door open? They, I have no idea. Oh, they just okay. were like, they said we we're about to tow it to a, like a, a dock where they can open it, and then they were like, all of a sudden, they're like, oh wait, hold on, we we got it. Oh, <laughs> oh it, was, it was just locked. Yeah, just the captain right, was just drunk. He's like, we forgot to unlock it, guys. <laughs> uh, the old on-off switch problem. Uh, <laughs> and then the only other plane story I'll, I'll tell you before moving on with the show was on the way over, uh, I was sitting on an aisle seat, and there was this woman next to me in the middle seat who, who believe it or not, was actually older than me, if you can fathom that concept. And she was she was in the middle, and she was playing on her iPad the whole time, Okay. So first of all, what I thought was interesting was <clears throat> it was like a four-hour flight, and she was doing this total like tour of the app store. Like she had all sorts of games, and she was, would play each one for like 10, 15 minutes. And there was not one game that I recognized, really? not one, because I was always looking. <laughs> what kinds like, of games were they? Well, they were like clones of clones. You know? <laughs> it's like, like she wasn't playing Candy Crush, but she was playing like a Candy Crush knockoff. Oh, and she wasn't man. playing Temple Run, but she was playing a Temple Run knockoff. It was that kind of thing. But the story I wanted to tell was that, uh, other than that, was that when she was playing her, her the Endless Runner game, okay, she there was this whole period of the game where whatever level she was at, she had to keep swiping to go right, which was like doing this <laughs> into my side the entire time. And every time she did it, she like physically hit me. And like the first few times I was like, I know an apology's got to be coming. Like yeah. she, there's no way she can't feel this because I'm getting knocked. Right. And, and she didn't. Like, I finally had to say something, and I felt like such kind of an ass. Was it, like, did it sound like this? Like, bitch, you're going to have to worry more about that <laughs> damn gorilla if you don't stop going right. 
pretty much. I mean, that's what was going on in my head. I, I tried to, I tried to, you know, get calm, not have my voice sound all angry. But I was just like, you know, I'm sorry, you know, like I'm a gamer too, but you've you've got to stop hitting me in the side. Like, we can't do this for the next two hours. Anyway, so she apologized and she stopped. Oh man, she was that's into my, it, Jeff. She didn't she even realize you were there. That's yeah. the power of gaming. Yeah. Then she goes exactly. and plays the Asphalt 8 clone, and she starts just... <laughs> she got to say I was impressed. I mean, she's just probably like her at iPad. least 60 and 65, and she was she was gaming hardcore. She was into it. Nice, hmm. nice. That was good to her. see. Good for her. Maybe she'd gone through all of the original games, and so she's like, well, I'll play right. the clones. This is all that's left for her. <laughs> I'm just... The way she's playing. Oh, that's further. Yeah. Anyway, that's my big story nice. for the week. JP, what about you? How, how's your week? Been? Uh, not. I don't have any big stuff. I haven't traveled anywhere. What, <laughs> what's the most exciting thing I've done? Um, how, uh, nothing. nothing. I try. It's nothing. Nothing. Okay. It, all I've done is play video games this past week. Yeah, I've 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 teetered between video games and you know uh, a lot of people know I like I'm a sucker for for television a lot of good television by the way game of thrones starts on sunday so watch that wait but, that starts this sunday yes it does, it does. holy shit this yeah week, guys i'm watching yeah. game of thrones I, did not know this. I knew it started in april but i tried to uh, ignore the date so that the hype was not the, there. Hype, now is the hype is now there. the hype is now <laughs> now i'm Anyhow. hyped so uh so i've I've heard enough people. I'm, I was going to say I'm also kind of a sucker for bad television. A lot of people like say I watch bad. It was like whatever. I like to be entertained. Everyone talks about Arrow. Like everyone oh, yeah, talks yeah, yeah. about Arrow. I'm, so I finally started really watching. Good. It. Oh, I'm only on like two. episode three of season one, but I'm re I'm uh, actually yeah, really two. enjoying it. So so that's yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, the it's thing with fun. Arrow is that like. It's really good, but it's also like so. It falls into the traps of like TV. Oh, it's, like, it's, it's CW so at its best. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's cheesy CW, yeah. as shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's what makes it so great. And actually, that's what makes this next show I'm about to tell that I, I'm almost embarrassed to say that I watched the first episode and looked at my wife and was like, greatest thing you've ever watched or <laughs> greatest thing you've ever. And, uh, and that, that's The Hundred. Which is about this oh, space that station that's like losing oxygen, so they that's send a hundred. Yeah, it's totally CW. So they send a hundred people down to this, you know, down to Earth because Earth had a huge nuclear war. But, but it's like a hundred teenagers, right? So what do they do? Party, God. fuck, be stupid, and it's just like <laughs> it's hilarious the the stuff. And there's like one or two or five of them. They're like, no, hey, this is wrong. We gotta do it. But by episode three, it is ridiculously brutal. And so it's like, <laughs> it's like you have these CW moments where it's like, yeah, you need to be the person, you know, your father always wanted you to be. And oh, I, and then all of a sudden, like the craziest shit happens and you're just like, oh, my God, I can't stop watching it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's good. It's I, good. I'm interested to see what you think of Arrow. The first season is like, it's like watching the first Batman movie. Yeah. Like, that's how long it is. <laughs> you ever dance with the devil in the pale you, movie? You get to season two, and, like, it's actually a different character in a sense. Like, okay. he's completely different almost. Interesting. And uh, it's it's really good. The, the the villain right now, they're at the end of season two. I think, I think there's, like, three more episodes. And um, the villain just, like, I don't know if the writers are just like, you know what? Fuck all this shit. We could just <laughs> rewrite it. Let's just, we're just going to have him do whatever he wants. And the villain's just like walking up to people and he's just like, hey, did you know this? And the character's face is like, oh, and then they cut to a commercial. It's like just these major drama bobs are happening. The character oh, just man, freaks out. TV. My understanding is that this show is, is getting good ratings and stuff because it's also kind of like, you know, good like man beefcake for, for women watching. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's what I've heard. Emails in the well, show. for me also... too, Jeff. I mean, oh, I, I like. Say, I'm like, oh man, let me look at the body I'll never have ever. I wasn't gonna say, but that's but exactly. Yeah, that, doesn't it actually start off and he's like doing those fucking lifts on the, the oh, pull up on the dude, bar or whatever? Well, so they... as long as we can all admit together, <laughs> yeah, we like uh, looking at that guy. It's okay. Oh, that's too funny. It's guy's too definitely. Funny. Uh, he's he's got the he's got the chops, both acting wise and uh, looks wise for sure. <laughs> but. I All actually right. caught up on Mad Men, by the way. No. Oh, I haven't seen the latest. Not watched. Season. Do you watch that at all, Jeff? Yeah, I'm, I'm way caught up. Yeah. 
Okay, so I'm like I mean, all I watched caught up. In real time. Yeah. yeah, and I, I didn't know that was also coming out in April. So now like the month real of soon. April just got so much better for TV because I'm like caught up on everything now. The thing I can't figure out, it seems like a total wild card to me. Have you guys been watching the commercials for Fargo? Oh, yeah. On FX? Yeah, yeah. There's like a Fargo TV show coming, which really? sounds like the worst thing ever, except the, the ads for it have been really cool. They've been really good. It's Billy like, Bob Thornton. Uh, what's his name? Martin Freeman. So the cast is like legit. That sounds awesome, yeah. So I don't know. I can't tell. It's either, it looks like it's either going to be awful or awesome. I think it. I think it'll be. I mean, it looks like it really captures. Yeah. The same thing that far. You know, like you have to take yourself out because it's obviously not necessarily the same characters. But I think there's right. a couple, but maybe that are crossover. And it looks like it's not the movie, right? I mean, it looks like they're. It's a set in that. I yeah, can't tell. They're yeah. not revealing too much. Yeah. Hmm. So, I think it'll be anyway. awesome. All right, Weird. let's talk about video games before right, people yeah. start going. Like <laughs> I tuned up, into the TV wrong show. And I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm I have this issue too. So, uh, now playing. Um, I'll I'll start. I'll start. Yeah, I've um, got two games, so go ahead. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll start. So, um, I, I guess I can quickly say I'm still playing Infamous. I didn't realize the game was as big as it is. I think that's mm -hmm. my takeaway point this really? week. Really? Well, dude, I like got to the got to like this big part where I thought I was just fate. I actually thought I was at the end of the game believe it or not and then and then all of a sudden it's like nope here's a whole new city just as big as the last one we gave you and i'm like oh shit there's probably another one of these too wait so, they, you, do you leave seattle you like go across the bridge right because oh, in the okay. story the bridge is cut off because the you yeah. know i guess one of the uh, uh, antagonists like cut it off you eventually make it over there after an encounter and i'm like oh Oh God, you know, like this, because huh. I left the first city with like so huh. much shit left to do. Right, right, right. So, um, I, you know, the the game t definitely <clears throat> pans out to be a lot bigger than I, I had even. Realized. Which is weird because if you could do the story missions, I mean, like when I looked at my percentage complete, <clears throat> at one point I was actually surprised how far it was. Yeah. So I, I was thinking like, oh shit, is this game like three hours? Well, and you know, like even though they can open up a new city, it, that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, like a lot of times near That's the true. end, it will just kind of like shoot you through. Yeah, right. So I don't know how much longer it'll go, but I still enjoy the game. I have to say the combat does end up getting a little bit. I worried about that. Yeah, yeah. It, it gets uh, a, you know, the thing is, is like once you reach the, the second city, then again, it's like new powers. So uh, they they seem to be introducing them still at a, at a good rate. But you still mm -hmm. kind of realize like once you have all your new powers, you're like, these are my go to things like this is just yeah. how I kill everyone. So are you up uh, to yeah, three yeah. sets or four sets? I'm, up, I'm about I'm up to three. Don't say what they are. OK, but you're up to three. Three. Okay. I'm building my third if you want to say that. So gotcha. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's... I still dig it. I think it's a really fun game. And uh, when I played it uh, last weekend after we talked, I, 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 I finally made it into Seattle. I'm, I'm much further there now. But, but the one most memorable moment I had was, was fairly early on still, and it was the Space Needle mission. Yeah. Which really cool freaked mission. me out. Like it really gave me a sense of vertigo climbing that yeah. thing. Yeah, it's crazy. Which I, I never get in games at all. But like that was kind of tense making your way to the top of that thing. Yeah, I, I never I actually that part fell. Would, would you die if you fell? Uh, I never fell either. You, well, I didn't fall. I, I actually, no, I don't think there is any fall damage because at that point in the game, you have that ability to use your fist, <laughs> and you so right. you could just probably like start charging it up right at the top of your. Oh, that's right, and just yeah. like hammer it to the ground. Thing. Yeah. So but still, I tried... when I like didn't make a jump right and I started going off into the yeah. air, I was genuinely like panicked for a moment. <laughs> Yeah. I tried to uh, to reclimb that after that yeah. mission. Yeah, and they, you hit a uh, you hit a skybox like you hit something oh, really? like going about like three fourths the way up the actual spine of it before you get to the top. So I think that like hmm. I think when you first get that mission, it loads in the uh, data or whatever. It, it, there's a load for it to load like the top of that, and right. I think that only loads once because I couldn't get back up there. But in the fiction of, I mean, I remember at the end of that mission, you like, I, this isn't really a spoiler, like you, you're blowing up. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. You know, and maybe the, whatever you blew up was sort of that's the parts that had the scaffolding. I don't know. That might be how yeah, they get around. trying to give the developers a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not complaining <laughs> about that. I was just like, oh, I guess I 
I yeah. can't go all the way up there. That was it was unfortunate because I thought the view and like you said, the sense of it's scale cool. and, and how high it was was yeah. was great. Was I wanted neat. to I wanted to go back up there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I just uh, wanted to to bring that up. I'll, I'll throw another one out there. Um, so uh, Mario Kart Eight. I got a chance to play mm-hmm. it at GDC, and you know JP is it like especially. Mario Kart 7? Uh, well, this is the first like true HD, you know oh. Mario Kart, and so I mean the the big takeaways from from it all were you know first off it is the first HD one, it looks fantastic, but then you've seen some of the footage and throughout the announcements where they've added basically all the wheels sort of turned to the side, and they become like these hover crafts per se and a lot of people maybe even including myself were like are they just kind of like drastically taking the series in another route but really what they've done is they've they've created this way to to make really unique tracks and i almost have to compare it to when you're playing through like the the newer super mario brothers or like even the donkey kong stuff you really get a sense of like holy shit this is creative as hell like you know this idea they came up with for this level or whatever and it seems like they've done the exact same thing and the way the mechanic works you guys is that you'll just see these blue strips that are sort of like kind of in different places on the stage what happens when you go over the blue strips it activates your you know your uh-huh. hover pads and then you you basically stick to walls what it does is it huh. takes like even old tracks and it completely makes them into That's sort of cool. new tracks because there's Weird. there's aspects of the of the stuff you're just driving around you don't even realize until you drive on it the nice thing is it's like not every single one is a super epic shortcut that's going to necessarily you know break the game so they did a, I mean, they, they did a decent job. Like, it feels like just traditional Mario Kart, what you would expect every time you pick it up. And this mechanic really doesn't change the game at all, except for even even offer a sense of discovery in a game that normally didn't even have it. Right. <clears throat> and don't you think by this point in the history of this franchise, they do have a little leeway to experiment? I mean, they should, it seems, right? Right? Yeah. Without killing, obviously, the core, you know, gameplay mechanics which they don't at, at all i don't i don't feel like they've you know that they've they've done that at all so mm-hmm. they did you know the, the game looks gorgeous too it's it's one thing they... I, you should have been on the pitch team week because i thought mario kart 8 was just another fucking ds game but if they would have named Me it too. mario kart 8 hd i would have uh, been all bored <laughs> yeah i been all into it yeah i i what I, what did you use the gamepad, like the gigantic gamepad for that? I did what use was the, the gamepad. Yeah, I did use the gamepad in sort of standard controls, but you could really easily switch it to like a steering, or you can use like <clears> an old school Mario Kart steering wheel. Does it that use they like have. that stupid motion control stuff for it? You, you know can if, if you want, but you don't have to. So I played with the gamepad, which is nice because then you can like. You can fl- you can immediately shoot it to the gamepad. You can put all of your status up there, like the rankings and the map. You know, like what the gamepad is is good for. Um, they've added a few new power ups. Um, they've got like the chompy plant now, chomper uh, that like sticks to the front of your. <laughs> it's totally oh, OP. Really? It sticks to the front of your cart, and then you could just like it'll like chomp and spit out. That's um, cool. What what were the other ones that they didn't really do too much other than take out some of the more OP stuff so the big question for me marcus yeah. is: do i have to have friends in real life to be able to play this game multiplayer you will be able to and play notice it. how i phrase that question not is there multiplayer because i know it's nintendo and i know the answer is probably going to be in some capacity yes but no you will be able to play it online yeah completely online yeah so like i could just queue and it'll throw me into a race i mean i i don't Okay. No, if they come on, Weed. I know you work for that. Nintendo as well as Shut. Quest. <laughs> no, I I don't know. They've said that there's just multiplayer online stuff. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think that information's out there. Maybe someone in chat will will actually know a little bit better than I do. I want to also mention they like they let you customize the carts before each race. So huh. it, you know, if you're doing like a sand race, then you might want to have like slightly different wheels than you would if so. Anyway. Yeah, they they did good with this. It's good. Like it's, uh, I can't believe I played this on the Super Nintendo, and I'm gonna yeah. be playing this with right. my kid in about you right. know when when it comes out. So that is kind of nuts. Uh, Available says, on five thirty. 
So, someone says Mario Kart Wii did that, JP, and I'm, I'm my mind is being blown right now. Did it actually have, like, online oh. multiplayer? Well, yeah, but this is going to look amazing. So, okay. you know. That's true. <clears throat> that's true. Yeah. I, that's, I, when is it? It comes out 520, 530? 530, 2014. Yep. Okay. I might be into that. I like dusting off my Wii U, like, once a quarter. Yeah, you know. And, of course, it's a first-party game, so... It's going to probably be great then. Yeah. Because so they don't have it. Gonna make have me, uh, party. This is what's going to make me want to finally buy one. I don't know, is it? At least then you know oh. you can fall back on like a few of the other good first Do party you like, games. Do uh, you uh, like Super Meat Boy type games, Jeff? Yeah. Like super hard platformers? I suck at them, but I like playing them for 10 minutes. If you, if you get a Wii U, you should pick up Donkey Kong uh, Tropical Freeze. Okay. That game like blew me away on how good it was. I I beat it in like two or three sittings. It was a fantastic game, and I was not expecting it to be in the slightest. I thought it was going to be yeah. <laughs> trash. But is it hard? Oh yeah, it's it's real super hard. hard. Yeah, yeah. It it had it's like, uh, it's like Donkey Kong like the original where it starts yeah. off like pretty easy, mm -hmm. and then like <laughs> each level gets like progressively harder. And by the end, you're just fucking like one to break that controller <laughs> in half, man. Like. <laughs> It, it was a really good platform. I was blown cool. away how good that was. So if you, I if always love the first-party games, but I end up sticking every – well, not every Nintendo machine. I should That's not true at all. But the Wii ended up in my closet much sooner than I expected it to be. Yeah. yeah. I, the Wii U definitely has lasting power just because it's HD and the games don't look like right. shit now. So. Right. But, yeah, Rare, Rare developed it. It's a it's a rare joint. So it, it's, it cool. was a fantastic game. Uh, if you need more of a reason to, to pick up a Wii U – I do. That. And then uh, you've got all the other games as well. I could right. sell you on a Wii U right now. Some, for some reason, I enjoy making people buy shit. You know me. So You've done that before with me. <laughs> <laughs> what did you buy? What did I make you buy? I don't know. It just seems like we've oh, had this conversation. It's happened. Did you buy a Vita? It was a Vita, but I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it. Good. So your sales pitches aren't working on me. So Good for you. <laughs> That's your superpower. Sales pitch <laughs> not work on Jeff Green. <laughs> all right. Who wants to throw out a game? Uh, well, I'll be quick because I, I last week I ranted and raved about Diablo three, and you asked me uh, right. if I'd still be playing it, and yeah. and I think you phrased it as a month. I don't. Uh, I I oh I've when I week. said, will you be playing this after? I think I probably said a couple weeks. So and my I think heart you categorized that as more of a JP question, not as a general question. Right. You know, like severe gamer gamer Correct. ADD. Correct. So the answer is I've already stopped playing Diablo three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Really. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not because like it's bad or I was frustrated with it. I think it was just because I played like thirty or forty hours worth in a week and just got burnout. Like the end game for that game is through and through like farming legendaries. That's what it is, mm -hmm. uh, and it's definitely more of a fun with with friends type deal. Um, and I was also playing the new class, which. As I switched to my Sork, I was already doing, like, a difficulty up, which I have a, a struggle with with my Crusader because the, the damage is just not that good, even with good gear. Um, so I think the Crusader is a little bit weak in terms of uh, power right now, huh. especially. But at the same time, I think the Sork uh, or Wizard or whatever is, like, completely broken right now in terms of power. Um, it's still, like, a fantastic game. I'm not sliding it at all. Uh-huh. The, the legendary stuff in that game is, like, I equate it, I think I said this last week, but it is just like the Hearthstone animation for PAX. Like, mm. it is so fucking good. When you see a, a mm. orange beam of light drop, <laughs> that, like, the childlike glee of coming down the stairs on Christmas <laughs> morning excites Yay! both inside and your, the smile uh, widens <laughs> across your face. You go and click it. Then there's two reactions. There's one where you get like a terrible fucking trash legendary, and then you just start smashing shit, or you get like a really good item that's an upgrade, and you're just so happy. You're on cloud nine. So there's actually trash legendary. Well, by trash, I mean like it's not an upgrade, or it's okay. Th there are legendaries that do not have like a unique property to them, uh, where it's just an extra. Uh, instead of like five magical properties, it's six, mm -hmm. or instead of six, it's seven. Okay. Okay. Um, uh. Some of them do have like special abilities that are only available on that item, uh, wow. which are which are cool. Um, That's cool. So, do you think you're going to go back to it, or are you done? Um, I mean, I'll I'll probably go back to it eventually. I 
I know uh, my, my friend's still playing it, but I've actually talked my friend now into playing ESO, which is the other game I've been playing. So I don't know how much he'll be playing Diablo 3 in the future. But um, yeah, I, I think I, it's the type of game where you can jump in for 20 minutes, do whatever you want to do, and jump out. Like the, the time commitment is very, very light on that game. Yeah, right, right. So there's always that. It's not like. And there's no monthly fee, right? So I can jump in whenever I want. That that's the nice thing about it. I, I kind of look at it as a grinding simulator, though. Once you hit level cap, because it all it, it right. is just 100% about farming legendaries. So I've always felt that Diablo, going way back to Diablo one, it's one of my go-to games for when I'm on the telephone with boring people who can't see me. <laughs> you know. Because you don't have to really think that hard. There's nothing to read, really. You're not missing anything. But I could just click monsters and collect loot while pretending to pay attention to phone calls. You know, the only problem there is the clicking. So I have to make sure that the <laughs> right. I think my dad busted me once on that. He's like, all I'm hearing on your end is mouse clicking. Jeff. So then I learned to put the the mouse a little further away from the phone. I like huh. it. Huh? I like it. And that's Diablo one. You said going all the way back. I've, okay. I've been doing it with three, two, one, two, and three. So oh, okay, people yeah, are like, on the phone. Hopefully, nobody who talks with me on the phone is watching this today. Yeah, they're probably with that fucking <laughs> green. That son of a bitch. No yeah. wonder he never says anything interesting. My Diablo one experience sucked because I just hacked as soon, like ten minutes in. Someone was like, "You can download hacks," and like the eight-year-old in me or ten-year-old wow. like, "Let's get up!" And I would go like, "I got a grandfather sword, yay!" <laughs> <laughs> that didn't strike you as not fun? Oh, no, it was great, Jeff, because I just obliterated everything. Okay. <laughs> I would, like, cliff, click once with the sork. I guess it was the sork or the wizard back then, and, like, chain lightning would just ravage the screen. It was awesome. You know, <laughs> I learned my lesson about that kind of stuff way back in the day during the Bard's Tale era where... You know, I, I was I was heavily into these games, and I, I learned all about hex editors and how, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the files of these games, the way deeper. that they were saved, yeah, you could actually go in and just hex edit yeah. the files. And so, like, I, I actually did this one time to a Bard's Tale 2 save, and I just made my, my party, like, ridiculous. And, and I found out that the game would scale according oh, wow. to you. So I couldn't even, like, it became impossible oh, to beat the game. Hilarious. And I was like, I'll never do that shit ever again. Like, what a waste of time. I was so mad at myself. And to that day, I was just <laughs> always like, I couldn't stand that stuff. Yeah. That's really funny. Yeah. I just never understood it. I mean, it's like, I'm not, I don't mean in a Pollyannish way, but I just was sort of like, isn't the point of playing games in the first place, like, to challenge yourself and have, yeah. you know, it's yeah. like, so if you're cheating... Why are you even playing? I don't know. I never really got it. Like that's true. Like okay, now I won. Well, now what am I gonna do? I mean, I could understand when you're eight, but then like I had when a buddy. Eight, so I, I had like, a buddy was who like, was like, I mean, I was probably like thirteen. Okay, well, whatever. whatever. You know, I, I had I had a buddy when he was like, you know, twenty two, and he would be like, yo. Check out this bot I got for Quake. And I'm like, you are <laughs> such a fucking dirtbag. Like, I cannot right. even, like, I don't even want to talk to you for a week. You stopped oh, right, using right, it. But right. I'm just like, what? A, you know, I just couldn't, right. I couldn't understand that mentality either, Jeff. Yeah, that's how I felt when I first started getting into League of Legends and was in the, uh, you know, well, I forget what the beginner area is called now, but it's basically self-selecting, right? I think, yeah. if I'm recalling it correctly, like you just go, it was like the new, like beginner maps right. or whatever. Yeah. And there's dudes in there who are so clearly not beginners. And it just is like, man, are, is your ego that low, really? <laughs> <laughs> that you have to beat me up here? Like, did you just get beat really bad by like actual good players at your level that now you have to come in here to make yourself feel better about yourself? Yeah. Just, yeah. 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 That's true. <laughs> Uh, what about yep. you, Jeff? Uh, well, I, like I mentioned, I was in Atlanta all week, so I didn't really have time to play much except a couple casual games on my uh, iPad. But uh, we, we discussed this for a moment before we started. I did download and get to play Goat Simulator Yeah. Uh, on Steam. And uh, have, have you, you've played it, right? No, I can't. I actually, I I put it on my list because I wanted to ask you guys oh. if you'd played it. I I watched a very small amount, sure. but I followed all the trailers. 
Yeah. I, I, I followed up with some like funny videos that came after the fact. Sure. Um, I did tune into one stream. It might have been the Giant Bomb stream and saw like a giraffe and a huge pair of nuts. Like literally within the first two <laughs> seconds of I'm like, oh, this is I know. So I'm really yeah. curious to hear if the game has any like as any redeeming qualities other than just being hilarious. No, it doesn't. Uh, but but I, I think to its credit, I don't think it pretends to. Okay. You know, it, it is it. It's just a big joke, but it's a funny joke. And and it keeps perpetuating, and you you keep finding new things where you're where it, you laugh just looking at it because you know why it's there. Right. You know, like early on in the game, there's a humongous giant uh, ladder, a swimming pool ladder, it just goes up and up. Yeah. And when you walk over to it, like of course the pool is drained. You know, so the whole point is basically just to dive off. And there's a trampoline you can land on, and then you get points for for that but um basically you get points for everything in this game so like okay. you, you know yeah. you, you, you head butt a trash can and you get points so you try uh, to like chain combos together so i suppose there's some score element to it right there's like, a score element right i blew up a gas station and got the michael bay achievement you know okay. it, it's that kind of thing I, it's just a big playground uh and you're a goat uh that that's all it is um but but I, what I like about it um, is that uh, it it just is what it is, and they they perpetuate the joke by having so much stuff in the environment. So it keeps you going just to try new stuff. Like so, it, it, go on. Well, uh, so uh, here's my question to you, right? Like <clears throat> mm -hmm. I kind of see an Octodad scenario where some guys made this like yeah. funny tech demo. People are mm -hmm. like, wow, this, you know, there's something to this. And they're like, oh, cool. Why don't we make a game out of it? Where I yeah. feel like sort of the the ridiculousness of the GOAT simulator, obviously the internet went crazy over it. Yeah. But do yeah. you think that there's actually what is happening now is almost, you know, like going out too soon? You know, maybe they could have mm -hmm. said, hey, if people seem to really like this, why don't we build a game around it? And then we give it a point. And then it's a hilarious game, and there's a point to play it. Like, at least with Octodad, yeah. hey, I had a story, and it was funny, and, yeah. you know, it was crazy, and the mechanics were there. Um, you know you know what I think would be hilarious is that what if it was like a Tony Hawk pro skater style, you know, it was all about the combos and doing the different things. I heard what you're saying. But at least yeah. then, like, there's, there's a reason. I'm just wondering, <laughs> do you feel like the company – is sort of blowing their load a little early by going this route rather than saying, hey, there might be something here. Why don't we make a whole game out of it? I, I think that's probably pretty dead on, actually. Yeah, I mean, because let's be clear, this is not actually like a good game. Yeah, you know, yeah, pe yeah. People watching this, you know, we're about talking about it, and I was saying how funny it is or whatever. You know, I got it for free. If I had paid money, I don't know, what does it even cost? Is it, 10 do you bucks, know what they're I charging? Think. Probably 10 10 bucks? bucks? Yeah. Well, that's about eight dollars too much. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, because I, I, you know, I started off saying it was funny and I liked it and I'm having a good time with it, which is all true. But it is not by any stretch of the imagination like a good game. It's just a very funny tech demo in a way. Um, and you're right. Uh, like the next maybe better step would have been to take this joke and then do something a little more real with it. Like you could have a story about this goat. Uh, and you could be tongue in cheek while also still offering something besides funny physics jokes, which is really all it is. You know, exactly. but their Q and A. I just was looking on their page. I have an idea: add open world and police and animal control and spaceships, and they re respond. Goat Simulator was made as a small game change. Exactly. That's what I, this is exactly and what that's I was about to say. How we want to keep it? We will polish up the game, but keep it from funny bugs. We want to keep the core gameplay small and silly. Hopefully the game can make you laugh for an hour or something. We are, however, working on Steam Workshop supports so people can build their own levels in the game, which is like, I guess, one part. But yeah. there, there you go. Hopefully the game can make you laugh for an hour or something. That's so about it. I guess you're yeah. asking yourself, is is that hour of laughter worth nine ninety nine? Right, and it was worth it to me for free. Yeah. And it will undoubtedly be that, you know... 37 cents sale that will go on during, you know, the, the 100%, spring yeah. sale or right. the summer I, I, sale. I, yeah, see, now I feel bad about even bringing it up because now that I realize that I got it for free because now I'm thinking, like, this is the one thing that's really going to kill the game or kill th – there's going to be such an immediate backlash because people are going to say, man, all these motherfuckers on Twitch and Giant Bomb and everywhere else were saying how funny it was. 
and I played it for like a minute and I got that I laughed and that was it. That's not ten dollars. And yeah. they probably and like what you were just reading, they never meant it to be some sort of internet phenomenon. It's sure. just a joke. But you know, if you've got ten bucks to blow, maybe they have bigger aspirations. Maybe they do. Than making do. games about goats. And and if I that's think... the case, I commend them for that. Aren't those the guys that made like Sanctum or something like that? Is that? I think they have another big game on Steam, Let and I want to say see. it's Sanctum. Journalists look here, Goat Some Assets of Goodies. I don't see anything that would link them back to it. Uh, it's Coffee Stain Studios. Oh. They they might have just made only Goat Simulator. Coffee I'm not Stain sure. Studios. They, we they have like 16 high quality people. Games. They have 16 people. 16 people on staff. Yeah. I guess I'm uh, not surprised. They produce. Yeah, high they did make Sanctum too. Yeah, they have. They oh, produced wow. Sanctum okay. too for PC, 360, and PSN. Okay. I think that's their biggest game. Okay. I'm oh, sure oh, they would. Yeah. Nice. Okay. I'm sure they'd be the first to say here that this is not the Last of Us. You know. Right. Right. It, that's. <laughs> I think that's littered. Like, we you open up the conversation. You're like, so is there like a score based multi? No, this game is literally about like. 10 minutes of dumb physics jokes and just like what you can cram into a game of just st stupidity. It's like dick jokes, but the game, like it, it's totally yeah. stupid, but at the same time, it's awesome that something like this exists, right? It's, yeah. it's cool that this is where video games are right now. What? Well, right. That, like yeah, random this shit have happened like this 15 can be profitable. Years ago, exactly. You know, exactly. Like, there just was no, yeah, exactly. It's a great that point. was my initial, that was my very first initial impression after I downloaded and loaded. I was like, what a wonderful world we live in that I can download a game called Goat Simulator, <laughs> you know? And because in the old days, it, you know, no store shelf would have stocked this. You would not find this at EB games or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. So to, just to have the, the experience of being able to play these dumb little things and that people can make these dumb little things and we can find them and talk about them it, it exactly. is cool. Yeah. It, it is less of a uh, game than Octodad Wheat. Yeah. If okay. That, okay, that's probably I the mean, best Octodad way Octodad was a game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was. I would not. Yeah. yeah. If they would have made like a goat simulator with a story like Octodad, then I could have seen... People like ranting and raving about it, but ten bucks might be a little bit too much if you're. You can you can watch like a, a quick look or a video of it or a let's play and, and be done with it. Like you'll get all the same jokes that the person does. Right. I, I would say so too. Right. If you've got the ten bucks to spare, Go why on. not? Mm -hmm. If you're tight on the money, then I wouldn't bother. Yeah. But it is cool to stick your tongue to something and just watch shit fucking go nuts. <laughs> like, that's really cool. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's actually, JP, let's go back to you for a second. Um, and let's see if Diablo 3 Part 2 is uh, in I, this next title for you. Because I, it, I think I have a long time to figure that out. Uh, oh, yeah? So I started playing uh, ESO. I, they started, I might have started Tuesday for Early Access. I started playing it Wednesday night, I think. Um, and I played the beta for like a total of five minutes. I was like, this game's trash. And I just threw it away. I, did, I never anticipated ever going back. And I was incredibly bored uh, per usual on like the Wednesday. And I was like, all right, let's just dive into ESO. Let's see how bad this game is. And <laughs> it's so unlike, like at face value, it's an MMO. But it is really unlike other MMOs for me. It is completely different from like a WoW or those type of MMOs where basically they took Skyrim and like put it into a to an MMO. They took away, you can play the entire game in first person. I'm going to play some of your footage. Do I have your permission to do so? Hit me, JP. Yes, cool. you do have okay, my permission. Okay, thank you. Uh, it'll probably be really stupid stuff. That's great. Um, <laughs> like me fucking with the crab for like 30 minutes. <laughs> I will actually watch that live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't, that game's weird, man. Like, they do a lot of MMO things, but there is a lot of, uh, like, exploration is promoted within that game where there's not a quest marker showing you where a quest hub is 90% mm -hmm. of the time. Uh, or no, probably like 30 or 40% of the time. There, there are those quest markers showing you where to go, mm -hmm. but it rewards exploration in the sense that, like, I made a character and got to level 12, and then I remade a character last night and played with uh, one of my other friends, uh, Ryan, for those watching uh, who know who he is, and 
we went a completely opposite way, and I found something that I had never seen in the 13 or 14 hours that I had played on my other character mm. in the starting zone. And so, like, it actually has a sense of exploration where if you're not using the UI mods and you're not constantly looking at the map or the next quest hub, you can just happen upon shit. And it rewards you for that by giving you uh, a shard that you can get more skill points for, or uh, perhaps there's random chests that spawn throughout the world, and you can go up and there's actually a lockpick minigame that you have to like solve on your screen, and if you don't have a lockpick, then you can't do it. Um, it's, it's just it's a really weird game, but I'm enjoying it, a lot of it. So it's weird good? Yeah, it, it's like, I went into it with like, okay, this is going to be another... This is going to be another WoW clone, right? And when you're watching it, it actually does look like that. It does look like another WoW clone, but it's not at all for me. Um, the, the exploration is actually a real thing. And I've heard that towards the end game or, or towards the later levels, um, it gets even more so like that because a lot of the stuff isn't or wasn't uh, earlier this week wasn't found. So there wasn't like a thought bot or a WoW head to go to right. to like type in a quest. And maybe that's oh. just what happens at the start of MMOs, right? Well, maybe right. That's, I mean, right. eventually it should be. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. So m maybe that's what this is, uh, and that eventually there will be a, okay, go here, do this, go that, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm sure there might be if you look for it. But that, that's what I'm enjoying mo most right now is just, like, the sense of exploration and not knowing what's going to happen <clears throat> in the next hour because who knows what I'm going to find or stumble upon, right? You don't. But I, uh, but to be fair, wouldn't that have happened in, in you know first week of WoW? What, I mean, it did WoW happen. Back it in did happen first week. Wow. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. I didn't know what the next zones were going to be. That's totally true. But WoW definitely, like, what's the WoW was a pretty like flat game, if that makes sense. Where like the world, at least vanilla WoW, was until they got like flying mounts and all that stuff. Yeah. was kind of just like flat. You never like went up like a giant mountain or like the, the, the environment wasn't all that interesting, I guess is the best part. Uh, with, with ESO, they've actually taken like every main world from all of the other games. So like uh, Cyrodiil, which I think was Oblivion. Uh, they've got uh, whatever the world in Skyrim is. It, maybe it's just called Skyrim. I'm not sure. But like that's all in this game and they're all zones that you go through. And there's also a lot of callbacks to, to Skyrim, like what, whatever the main city is, the, was it Whiterun? Was that the main city in Skyrim? I forget the name. They yeah. make like a joke that like they'll make anyone a king of that city or whatever, which is just like saying yeah. that anyone can play Skyrim, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. Um, but it, I, I'm enjoying it thus far. Uh, I guess Would we'll you have pay to a monthly it. subscription for it? I'm not, I don't have to the first month, uh, thankfully, but... We'll see if I'm if I'm pay playing in month two. I guess you can ask me next week if I'm still playing it. But so how does that work? That, it's free to play, and they give you a month. Uh, no, no, no. It it is so. Uh, it is you buy the game uh, for oh, sixty bucks, okay, okay. Or eighty, um, whatever. If you go with the collector's edition, which I'll talk about here in a second, because some people do have an issue with that. Um, or and then you get the first month free, much like any other MMO, and then it's fifteen dollars a month after that. So there, there is a, a monthly sub, which I think it might be the only other MMO right now with, with that besides sub. WoW. I can't think of another major MMO that has like a monthly sub to it right now. I think everything These else days. is free to play. Like everything else, yeah. Yeah. But let's say I'm a, a person who who played WoW for forever and I'm not, this is not me. I, well, I did play WoW for forever and I did play Elder Scrolls, but let's say I'm a fantasy MMO fan, but I've burnt out on WoW, and I'm not familiar with the Elder Scrolls universe. Do you think this game is going to get to those people? Like, is it going to offer enough that's not WoW that they're going to feel like this is cool if they're not someone who played Skyrim and gets the references and all that? Or is this just going to look like another fantasy MMO that's like WoW? I, I think it might look like another MMO fantasy that's not WoW. Like, a lot of people that have watched my stream are mm. only interested in the game because I've said that it's not bad. Not, like, if people come to my stream and watch it with muted, like, muted uh, voice, they're probably going to be like, this game looks so incredibly boring. Like, how is this it well, fun at all, et cetera. I guess that's going to be where my line of questioning goes, is, like, do you feel like there's a grind? I know when I played some of the open beta stuff, I was just kind of like, ah... 
you know, I don't even know. And, and maybe I didn't take the exploration like to heart the way I should have, but I, I'm still, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know. Like, I, I think that my opinion on it is actually still forming, which is kind of wild. Yeah. So I put like, I think that's 30 good, hours though, into right? It. That if is good. Sure, of put that much good. in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I mean, is, I, I want to like it. I, I do. I'm just so skeptical. I mean, I loved, I played the Elder Scrolls games going all the way back to Daggerfall, right? And, right, the, and, the, right. and the thing that I loved about them was specifically the opposite of this. It was that it was such an immersive single player experience. Like, to me, it was like, th this is where I can go to totally dive into a fantasy world by myself. And my, my actions are going to influence the world and the story and all that. Like, it never would have crossed my mind in a million years if they hadn't made this game. Boy, they really should make an online Elder Scrolls game. Right, right. right. You know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so I, I do want to clarify what you're seeing on, on stream, or I don't know if Wheat's still showing it or not because there's that delay, but uh, like 90% of the UI that's on my stream, uh, the video that Wheat's showing, you is customize. all mods. It's all customized. Oh, wow. The game is super minimalistic in what you see. In fact, you never even see damage numbers up on your screen. <laughs> the only thing you so see you is like you had to install your... these or these are options within the game? I had to install these. They're, mm. they're third-party mods. That, wow, there's actually a pretty big mod. Uh, uh, like uh, Curse is all over this now. Uh, I think Zam is also all over Well, that's kind of but, interesting, too, because that community took so long to build on World of Warcraft. Right. Well, now, these days with MMOs, like those are already there in beta, right? right? They, they know yeah, that there's yeah. money to be made with all that stuff, and, and they <laughs> start churning it out immediately. Um, but, yeah, the, the UI is incredibly minimalistic, and it's it's... You're kind of playing, like you said, that single player experience until like you're like, oh, I should loot that chest, but I want to kill this guy first. And you start fighting this guy and then someone some comes up. Sha Shaquille O'Heels fucking walks in and like starts <laughs> looting your chest. <laughs> and then you're like, what the fuck, man? I was I was killing this mob first and you can't do anything about it. Right. Like there 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 are public in, not public instances. Uh, I guess that's what you call them. Like, you'll zone into an area, and it's not just you in there, which right. could probably break that experience for you, Jeff, where you're totally wanting it to be like a Skyrim, but Jack Off 37 walks in and just leaves <laughs> whatever you're trying to deal with, right? That was my problem. Hey, I, I'm Jack Off 37. Yeah. Anyway, uh, how do you know? Um, that was my problem with uh, uh, Lord of the Rings Online when it first came out. Yeah, Because I'm a huge, huge Tolkien geek like so many of us. And I was psyched to play that game at first, and I was into it. And I remember specifically the moment where that game broke for me was where you 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 go and you meet Strider for the first time. Yeah. And, and uh, you're having to do you know you're trying to get out of the uh, 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 the room. I forget what it is. Basically, it's the first time you walk into his bedroom, yeah, or into his room at the hotel, and you and you meet him. And and I go up the stairs. And there's basically like a line of players. Yeah, because exactly. <laughs> yeah, when you go into his room, it had to like load another instance because it, right. it throws you into his room by himself, right? Or by yourself. Right. But like Jeff said, there's like 30 fucking people sitting there at the door like <laughs> trying so to click funny. to get in. Right. And that definitely happens in Elder Scrolls. And it's also really weird because you, you can play the entire game first person. Like it's very easy to switch out to you. Just hit V and it pops you out into Fancy third person. Thing. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Chat just reminded me. A brain and uh, it'll happen when you when you zone out of somewhere. You like you're at a door, and if you're in first person, it's actually kind of scary because it'll just load their jawline and their eye sockets. <laughs> and there's they're like bloody and they're like floating, and that's all you see <laughs> on your screen is like this moving eye socket and face, because you're like inside of their body. And so that kind of like it would probably ruin your I, I if you're going in for like the elder scrolls solo experience jeff i don't think you'll have a good time yeah i mean i you know i i've it might also be frankly just i've played hundreds of hours of fantasy mmos and i might be done sure. at this point in my life yeah um, yeah i've said that tons tons of times before that it's like well i guess i could play this mmo and that's that's where <laughs> i'm at right now so. Well, I'm I'm I'll be curious to hear the follow up with uh, yeah, yeah. you know with you and see how long. And I will say I've only hit level thirteen, and like the levels are like hours apart. They've they've said that it's like four hundred hours and to cap twenty, right? 
No, the cap is six or fifty with ten oh. levels that as well called oh. veteran levels. I don't. Oh. I think they're like alternate advancement stuff. Oh, but shit. I do know that there are people that are already fifty, of course. And the best way to level is just by killing mobs and not doing quest. Hmm. So those people have actually just grinded on mobs for like uh, oh forty. Oh my god! Sorry, which that sounds like me, fun. Not, yeah. yeah, seriously. Yeah, they're literally running in a circle where there's like a train of mobs and just oh. constantly killing. It's kind of nuts. Nice. <laughs> it's kind of nuts. Man, nice. it sounds like I'm. I and feel like part, my personal hell, is, right? There's yeah, two. Yeah. I have. Yeah. I have two personal hells. The one would be like, I go to hell, and then Satan's right there, and he's like, Hey, wheat, I want you to move all of the shit from this house over to this house, and then when you're done, <laughs> yeah. I just want you to keep doing it and fin And then the second one would be like, Hey, you're gonna grind to level infinity <laughs> just off of these fucking rats that give five yeah. XP. Yeah. Like no. I, I do want to clarify, while that is the, so far, the best way to level, the preferred way to level, and I haven't seen a, a stoppage of this, is by doing quests. Everything's actually voice acted in this game as well. Yeah. Like, I think Michael Gambon is, like, the, the main character or the main NPC that you deal with. So you can totally just do quests and take your time with this game, which is what I'm doing. Usually I would, like, do the hardcore way, but... I've grinded too many fucking mobs, guys, in my MMO days. I do not want to do that yeah, <laughs> shit. Yeah, I'm more interested in doing the quest. And the funny part, too, is that the people that did that are actually going to have to go back and probably do oh, the God. quest because you get skill points for doing quests. Oh, my Lord. Oh, God. So you get, like, additional stuff for doing the quest. That, it, Like, those guys are nuts to me. Those guys are nuts to me. And I don't know if there's a cap of skill points that you can get in the game. I... I don't know how that works. I don't know how that works. So we'll see if I'm still playing it a week from now. All right. Well, before we go over to break, I just want to make a comment about a couple of mobile titles from this week. And I think there'll okay. be mobile titles that will actually interest people. First off, Hearthstone for the iPad was soft launched in Canada, oh, yeah. Australia, and New Zealand. So I, I, it was the first time I've ever done this, but I made a, I made a Canadian iTunes account. Uh, it's actually pretty easy. You can find it really quick on the net, and uh, you, you don't have to put your credit card info or anything in there. I put, like, the Toronto Zoo as my address, and then it's like, hey, you're Canadian. <laughs> it's like, awesome. I, so I, from what the rumor mill is saying is that it's going to fully launch next week, but this was just to kind of, you know, and I have to say, like, first off, the mobile experience is fantastic. It's great, but there's no doubt a little bit of performance issues when you go really? from, like, the beefy super rig where it's just, like, 60 oh. FPS, amazing feeling, like, everything is good, to, like, a little bit slower loading times. Mm. So, like, you know, sometimes... Um, uh, like you put down a card, there's like maybe a little delay in the animation, and I feel like they'll probably continue to optimize the shit out of it. Sure. I think their goal was to make sure that they could get it on all the platforms, so mm -hmm. you know, like all the the generations that could handle it. Uh, but you know, I, it's definitely noticeable, you guys. It, but it still is amazing. There's a couple of things because I've been playing it on my Surface. And there's a couple things that I feel like I actually like on the Surface better than the iPad. And that's things like when I want to look at the cards in my deck, you know, I can use like the Surface Pen and just hover over the cards and they pop out a little bit They'll more organically. Uh, where like you have to actually go in and, and like press the card, but then I'm always afraid I'm going to play it. Where it's like oh. I know, you know, like on the Surface, I, I, I like have to tap and then tap again to commit it. Where everything on the iPad is definitely a tap and drag. Now, you know, I mean, you'd have to be kind of silly, but, like, sometimes I'm just, like, looking through or whatever. Anyway, there's some differences. It takes a little bit of getting yeah. used to, but it's quite awesome to have that experience. And I just connected it to my Battle.net account. All my card collections are there. I got a free pack We're for nice. playing on the iPad, so I was stoked about that. <laughs> you know, like, that'll get people to try it out. And uh, So yeah. is there any relationship from, like, the PC and the, I guess, the mobile version of this where, like, you have shared cards. Right. So the way it works is that your whole collection is available the moment you log in with your Battle.net ID. So really? on my iPad, it's right. got everything. That's really cool. Here's that the is difference cool. is that the payment methods are not necessarily synchronized. What this means for me is that I will continue to buy all of my decks or, or whatever through, you know, through my, my desktop client. Yeah. I, because it goes through the App Store otherwise. 
you know, right. that that's that, I guess that's fine, but at least like, you know, it, my Battle.net comes out of a certain account and it's easy for me to track and whatever. Uh -huh. The only thing is if I want to play an arena, I have to play I have to like pay the app store versus using my Battle.net right. account. Does Apple it, get a cut of that, you think? I've got to imagine that, that, that they do. There's a lot that's of just restrictions, how Apple works. Uh, restrictions right. on in-app purchases. Yeah, like I don't think right. you're allowed to have your own payment system. You're not. Is it the same price? Yes. Apple just owns the whole thing. Like that's why back in the day, their Amazon used to have an app in which you could buy Kindle books from uh, the Amazon app, and now right. they they had to strip that out. But so. you know what's amazing, right? Like think about this because we talked about it last week. Remember we talked about in-app purchases yeah. bumping up those games. Hearthstone yeah. is going to go up so fast, right? Because people yeah, are going to buy 40 packs, arena runs. Every time someone drops down an arena run in Hearthstone, boom, it's just going to like oh, keep yeah, climbing yeah. to the top. It's going to be They'll probably insane. make so much more money off the actual mobile version uh, of that game they might. than they do on the desktop. They really I might. honestly think it's going to... That's what I've been waiting for. Yeah. I've been just waiting for the iPad version because that's how I tried it originally back at PAX. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, this is it, man. This is the yeah. killer game, killer app for the iPad, game-wise. It is, uh, is going to, I guarantee you, it is going to, it's going to, like, put something on the, the needle. Like, the needle's going to go <laughs> bloop in iPad sales. It's just, it's going to happen. I guarantee, I, there's, like, five guys I work with. And they're like, they're always like, oh, your iPad, you carried it around. I'm like, yeah, you just wait till Hearthstone comes out. Every yeah. single one of them has yeah. already bought a new high yeah. iPad. Like, and do you have the latest iPad, by the way? And it's I still actually lag? have the, uh, I have the latest, or no, I, I don't have the Air. I, I have a, the Retina. So it's, That's so the to. Air on the, with the A4 chip, I think it has the A4. Like it might, it might Play be it. just yeah. fine. What about your Surface? Did it lag? It was it same. No, nah, Surface, dude. The Surface Pro Two is practically like a PC. Okay. Like, that's that that fucker was streaming Hearthstone and playing it at the same <laughs> like from the same little tablet. That thing is a beast. It could it okay. handled it no problem. But what's uh, crazy too is I, I feel like Watsy kind of blew it, don't you? I mean, like the the Magic app is okay. It's been okay, but like. They could have had this. This could have been them. The yeah. sad thing is they know, Jeff. Like, they they just know. Uh, it's it's very evident. It's also harder, too. They've got I've... thousands of cards, you guys. Like Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and mechanics that match these cards. That's what I was about to say. There, I've, I have heard uh, rumblings that, like, there's some artwork they don't even have original for. Like, could they probably rescan something from a card? What? Yeah, but like, uh, imagine not having original print. Like, if your goal was to put Magic truly online, yeah, and and support legacy, whew, yeah, dude. Well, wouldn't want to be in charge of that project, man. See, that's that's the weird Fair thing enough. too. Yeah. Like, Blizzard has such a an up, believe. Like, and it's weird to say that. Like, they have an up on a company that's been doing a trading card game for like. 20 years or some absurd number right because right. a they have the installed fan base of wow like hearthstone is going to fucking just destroy everyone else's numbers for a card yes, game. yes it is yeah. because of wow because of the blizzard yeah fanboy that that has played mm -hmm. their diablos their starcrafts or their their wows right so they've already got that over wizards of the coast they've also got this thing where they they only have like we said they only have how many cards? Like 100 cards or something in Hearthstone, and that's it. And it's also yeah. so simplified that the fucking random idiot, a.k.a. me, can join in there and, like, understand what's going on. Whereas with Wizards, right. there's, like, a very, very detailed way to play that game. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, that's this is what Blizzard has always done. That's what they've always excelled right? at, exactly. I mean, that, WoW, that, that Hearthstone is to magic what WoW was to EverQuest. Right. Yeah. They, they took everything that was awful and difficult and arcane about EverQuest and just made it super easy. Yeah. Yep. And that's what they did with In Heroes as well. Yeah. So, right. Someone right. from chat, uh, Cock, says uh, Wizards of the Coast probably have an interest in not making a good digital game since it might cannibalize their card business. And while I do agree that that has probably been the case over the past three years or so, you these companies have to look at the landscape of what's happening. And we have to be totally realistic here. Soulforge, Hex, yeah. Ascension. Yeah. Like the, the current trend is that we might just be playing these games digitally going forward. Like yeah. I can That's imagine right. where 
instead of pulling out our decks, we do just pull out our iPads or tablets or whatever that is, and we're battling that way. And as more of this stuff comes out, like, I think that, you know, and not to mention the Planeswalker games from, you know, from Magic, which is done by another company, but they're mm -hmm. remarkable. It, it, yeah. show, it proves <laughs> yeah, that are. Magic can be done in that fashion. So I feel like even though that's a mentality that Wizards has probably kept for several years because they've dominated that market, I also feel like they know. They, they are very well aware of the current climate and that this is a direction things are going and they need to be there. So I yeah. have confidence in them. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't know how they're going to, I don't know what road they'll travel to get it done. Well, it's going to certainly be interesting to see like how huge Hearthstone is on the, on the, on the iPad and on the, on the other mobile devices and see, you know, if it is as big as, as, as you're predicting we, then yeah, they're, they're going to have no choice but to react. And then it'll, it'll be interesting to see how they do it. And if they can even take on Blizzard, or if Blizzard's just going to beat them at, in, at their own game. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Blizzard's just, uh, and I know we got to go to break, so I'll be short with this, but Blizzard's like having one of the most remarkable years I've seen for a video game company in a long time in terms of what they've put out in the past three, four months. Like even 2014, not even counting 2013, uh, the fiscal year. Like, think about that. Diablo expansion came out last week, Hearthstone went public. Heroes went into open beta the same week that Hearthstone went yeah. done, that it was done. Now Hearthstone is available on iOS in the same month, I think. Then later this year, we've got the uh, WoW expansion. Yeah. StarCraft's kind of doing whatever it's doing, but eventually they've got We might hear about their new out. project, too, and you know yeah. that that's and they have this blow project shit that, up. They're, that they're doing in the background that it's a new Blizzard IP, so of course that's massive, like... Yeah. They're just, and they also left uh, their their former people at uh, what was it, Vivendi? Like they're no longer a part of that. They're just their own people right now. Like they're just fucking killing it. And that's totally not the Blizzard fanboy in me speaking. But <laughs> it is everything it they're doing is just shitting gold right now. They, they've become like the Nintendo of the new age. It's well, I, they I, and and I you know, I, I I do think in the past couple of years though, like they did take they've taken some hits though. You know, I think oh that, totally. You know, that I think there was a, a, a large perception that maybe they jumped the shark a little while ago or, um, you know, the magic was coming off. You know, they got a whole ton of shit for Diablo 3 when it first shipped. Oh, yeah, that was terrible. You know, um, so, yeah, I mean, th in a way, this is a comeback more than anything else, you know. But, uh, you know, you knew that this was going to happen. There was no... Sure. You would have, a, you know, to write Blizzard off would be very, very silly. Right. Yeah. And I don't think, yeah, I don't think people really ever did, but yeah. still in that one month, like so much shit has yeah, come from right. that company that is on, like if, if another company was just developing one of those games, it would be a banner year for them, right? It would be like the biggest thing of that entire company. But here is Blizzard, like with in a month's time that have released three different titles or announced three different titles that are all playable. Yeah, I think they're also yeah. the same. The the one company that understands how important Twitch is, because the first yeah, thing they right. did with uh, Heroes was gave it to streamers. That's yeah. free advertising for life. Yeah, mm -hmm. like right now you can go on Twitch and watch a Hero stream. You don't have to go to HeroesOfTheStorm.com and watch a press video that right. is boring and yeah. et cetera, et cetera. That's super true. I I think that's only going to be more and more of the case, right? I think more and more you're just going to see. Twitch, uh, Twitch compatibility built right in, and yeah. not just Twitch compatibility, but I mean more like the the strategy, the marketing PR strategy right. being directly to go to Twitch. Yeah, it's like dumb not to. Hey, we're advertising for the thing we're broadcasting yeah. on now. Yeah, there yeah. you go. How amazing! That's what happens? <laughs> Let's uh, actually, we're gonna take a break, but real quickly because I don't need to spend a whole lot of time on this. But faster than light, I'm sure that many people have played this on Steam. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, put countless hours into it. It finally released on iOS, and oh, and a lot of times we get these games. That's it's scary. like, oh yay! But I played it two years ago. Who cares? But they released with like a bunch of new stuff on oh, iOS no. too. Yeah, it's that, ten they, bucks. They released the 
the AE version or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, and here God, comes, I didn't need to know this. Here comes the real killer, Jeff, is that you know that every once in a while there's games that you're just like, God, I wish this was on the iPad because it yeah. would be perfect. You know, I think of like the Shadowrun uh, strategy game, like perfect uh -huh. for the iPad. Even XCOM loved it on the iPad. Yes. Awesome. This game made for the oh, iPad. No. It's just, oh. it's, yeah, it's like, <laughs> you, in fact, you find yourself, you're going to be like, holy crap, I'm like way better than I was in the, oh, you know, fuck. because you have a little bit more, you know, you can handle the chaos, in my opinion, a little bit better. Uh -huh. It could still get hairy when you're like, yep. close the doors, the fire spreading, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's pretty great. Is it oh, only shit. a one-time buy? There's no, like, yeah, you get the nine ninety nine, get you all everything. Uh, you don't have okay. to pay a dollar every Just, time yeah, you want to fix a open turret. A door or something. <laughs> yeah, that's every what I'm Every time there's about. a fire. No, I, yeah. I would, you know, if you're not convinced yet, this uh, will go on sale for four ninety nine sometime in the future. But I'll tell you maybe what, I'll pick it's, that up. it's great. I've never played FTL, like a single second of it. Oh, so. man. Seriously? Oh, yeah. my God, it's so good. Yeah, get I might ready pick it to, up for the flight next week. Your butt's going to be sore because, like, you find yourself in the bathroom, like, oh, I can just do one more run. And then you're like, my legs aren't working. Well, you yeah. know how I am with mobile and even with handheld shit. So maybe if it can do we'll that, see, then yeah. I'll be impressed. It really is the classic just one more game game. It is. Uh, it really is. So, all right, let's take a quick break. Uh, break and when we come back, uh, if there's any now playings, we'll cover that. And uh, then we'll move on to some news as well. So, guys, thanks for joining us for 8-Bits. We've got a second hour coming up right after this. Don't go away.